so I think it's uploading there. And I'll, I'll let you know one minute in advance if, if necessary. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, can you see all see that? Yes. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Um, thank you very much for introducing me, Oscar. So hello, everyone. Um, my presentation, my presentation is on my research, which is a bit of a mouthful, as Oscar just um, titled it. It's investigating the lack of immersion education regarding second language acquisition with specifications as French language and the development of factors affecting language learners due to remote learning during COVID-19. Um, so just an overview of how the presentation will go. I'll give a few key terms that I'll refer to, refer to throughout. It'll be followed by the research questions, my methodology, the findings, and then the conclusion. So just a few key terms um, I'll refer to is second language acquisition, and I defined it in my research paper as the study of learning a language other than one's native language. And immersion education, I um, created the definition in the paper as well as an educational intervention used in bilingual language edu education. Um, and then just a few abbreviations there, which I'll refer to um, throughout. So just a bit of background information on how I got my research questions. So we've all been living with COVID for the past two years, and um, this has enforced new restrictions and new measures. Um, and adaptations within the home. So one of these adaptations was a new was a remote online learning, um, and students had little to no time to adjust properly to this. Um, and it was as is, it was the only source for um, education. So with this, obviously, impacted students immensely, both intellectually and mentally. Um, not only were they expected to adapt fully to this new way of learning, but the onset of the pandemic prevented anyone from traveling abroad. So unfortunately, this caused a huge disruption to programs such as Erasmus. Um, and as a victim of remote learning, I was unable to take part in my Erasmus program in France. Um, and because of this, I believe that the lack of my time abroad affected my second language acquisition of French, which was the aim for my um, project. So then the research questions were then derived from personal experiences and perceptions um, towards remote learning and they're as follows. So how has the coronavirus pandemic affected third level student education? And um, what factors mainly affected a person's second language acquisition? Um, how important is immersion education in second language acquisition and how effective is remote learning when learning a second language? Um, so then I'll just go on to the methodology. Um, so my methodology was an online questionnaire and I used the uh, software Qualtrics. Um, the questionnaire consisted of 10 questions. There were eight open-ended questions and two closed-ended questions, and they both gathered qualitative and quantitative data. Um, the questions addressed topics such as the language being studied by the participant, the CEFR level, perceptions on second language acquisition, immersion education, and remote learning. So for anyone that doesn't know, uh, CEF or, or the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages. It was a me it's a method used in my study and it, is, um, it was used to obtain um, participants' language proficiency uh, in their second language. So after receiving all the feedback from the 41 participants, uh, I used thematic analysis to derive teams from the answers in order to present my research. Um, as my project involved human participants, I had to receive ethics approval from the Ethics Committee in UL, um, which I did, and I, all participants were over the age of 18 years old. Uh, so the different variables in the project were uh, the language. So the languages were French, German, Spanish, Italian, Chinese, Russian and Irish or Australia. Uh, the CEF or level or language proficiency, those who took part in an, in an immersion programme like Erasmus and those who took part in remote learning. Um, and then they were, they were measured on a nominal, ordinal and interval uh, level. So my findings, I've split it up into two, so qualitative results and the quantitative results. So firstly, the overall level of proficiency among participants was an independent level at B1, B2 uh, on the CEFR. Uh, a high percentage of 90% of the participants proved that um, their second language education was affected by the pandemic and over half were able to take part in the in an immersion program with 58.5% or 58.5% been able to take part. 
um, but a high figure still represented those who did not take part with 41.6%. Um, responses displayed sacrifices and adaptations uh, students undertook in order to be able to take part in Erasmus, such as taking it at a later stage in the academic year and uh, missing out on a semester in their home college, which affected their grades as they were not marked on a pass-fail basis. Um, others completed alternative programmes to Erasmus, such as the Transnational Virtual Exchange Project between the University of Lim Limerick and five other European partners universities. Uh, so this showed how much the pandemic or how much um, the pandemic affected students' education of the second language and almost all of the participants had to take part in remote learning, um, which results reflected how quick students had to transition into online learning. Um, so the overall results then concluded that participants found remote learning to be ineffective as majority expressed negative feedback remote regarding um, remote language. So then just on to the quantitative results. Um, so the, these results express, expressed participants' perceptions and attitudes towards uh, second language acquisition, language immersion and remote learning. Uh, the most popular second languages studied by participants were French, German and Spanish. So this suggested that the Romantic and the Germanic languages are easier studied at third level um, as the bilingual, bilingual participants um, studied one or more of these languages. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so then the participants believe that living abroad in the country um, of the language they're studying is very important with the concluding hypothesis that it forces uh, language learners to speak the second language in an immersive environment while also learning new colloquialisms and idioms which cannot be taught in the classroom. Um, practice and immersion went hand in hand um, as participants felt that speaking, hearing and being surrounded by the language affected SLA. Uh, different attributes such as interest, willingness to learn, dedication to the end goal, taking initiative and the amount of effort uh, were all presented under the category of um, motivation. Participants believe that not committing oneself or the ease of access accessibility to English uh, caused a reduction in motivation. Um, they also felt more confident when they were not overthinking and felt comfortable in the environment that they were in. Um, Self-doubt of one's knowledge of the language increases anxiety in speaking the language, which was an ongoing issue when in the context of remote learning expressed by participants. Um, a lot of them found that the standard of education that one receives from a certified practitioner of, of the language, the learning environment and resources to be very important for SLA. A majority of the population disliked remote learning. Uh, correlating themes were a bad online experience, lack of immersion and education, um, immersion and emotion, sorry. So the strong dislike towards remote learning was due to it being an overall bad and difficult experience with technological issues, lack of resources, ease of online um, resources like translators, lack of immersion and high levels of negative attributes. Um, such attributes were lack of concentration, focus on participation, which developed in remote online learners. Um, and I'll just pop on to the next slide, sorry. Um, so then similarly, a large percentage of 74 or 78.4% represented the negative effect um, remote learning has during a pandemic on participants. So it, in which the teams were overall difficult experience, um, emotions, lack of immersion, learning process and mental state um, was expressed by participants. Um, their proficiency in language decreased immensely as online learning caused a lack of participation and effort and reliance on online tools such as Google Translate. Um, high levels of emotions were, were evident, which resulted in participants' degradation of mental state, leading them to feel stressed, anxious, lonely and bored. Um, so just to conclude, um, the purpose of my research study was to investigate the lack of immersion education regarding second language acquisition um, and the development of factors um, affecting language learners due to remote learning during COVID-19. Um, so research has proven that language immersion is extremely important for language learners in order to benefit and progress to the fullest of one's capability. Um, the learning and teaching process during remote learning proved mostly ineffective and to be negative on majority of, of participants. Um, sadly, results produced negative um, emotions which affected participants both on an intellectual and personal level as students felt very alone due to the lack of social interaction and having to learn from a computer 
computer screen. Um, so therefore, this research has added not only to a body of research regarding second language acquisition, but it is specific to second language acquisition and remote learning during a global pandemic. Um, so this could be used for and lead researchers into future research regarding development of effective and pedagogical methods for online learning and teaching and can also influence the development of alternative um, immersive programs. Um, but with every research project, there is limitations and some of my some in mind were the extensive use of open ended questions and lack of closed ended questions. Um, so the open ended questions can be time consuming to answer as participants have to write the answers out and this can lead to a lower response rate and can mean less data to analyze and um, with lesser insights um, and are difficult to compare as they're not based on percentages or numbers. Um, and they can contain a lot of irrelevant information, which can be difficult to analyse. However, they do allow for unlimited responses and um, which participants answer questions from different perspectives. And um, this just this, sorry, this distributes uh, new and unexpected insights and information, receiving honest opinions from participants, um, which was needed for my project. Um, another limitation was the insufficient size sample of 41 participants. I would have liked maybe if it was a little bit larger um but overall i've really enjoyed uh, i really enjoyed doing my research project as not only was it interesting but it proved um, my purpose on an academic and personal level and um, it also pushed me to excel in areas i'd never experienced such as retrieving data and presenting it um so thank you very much for listening to my presentation and i'd be very happy to answer any questions you